Okay, for chapter eight, we have Out the Window, and we have Sarah and Aiden finally getting to inspect uh, the mysterious box on their own. Good night, kids, said Natalie. Good night, Mom, said Sarah and Aiden. Tomorrow, said Tom, standing with his wife in the hotel, hotel hallway, I was thinking we might visit the... Good night, Dad. Gently closing the door, Sarah said to her brother, finally. Since leaving the tower, Sarah and Aiden had spent more than eight hours waiting impatiently for a chance to have a closer look at the golden box. But their father has always crammed the rest of the day with sightseeing, so by the time they'd eaten dinner and returned to the hotel, it was past 10 p.m. Sarah unslung the backpack, set it on her bed, and unzipped it. She lifted out the heavy box and held it up to the light, examining the newly formed seam which ran along what she assumed was the top edge of the box, about an inch from the edge. So it's like a lid, I guess, said Aiden, touching the seam. Looks like it, said Sarah. Are you going to open it? I guess so. You don't sound too enthusiastic. Well, I was thinking about the whole death to thee thing. Oh, now you're thinking about that. I just think we need to be careful, that's all. Meaning what? I'm not sure. Great plan. I'm thinking. Hold on. Sarah studied the box. The thing is, in the books, when they dealt with star stuff, they were wearing gold suits. Oh, okay then, I'll just go grab my gold suit. Sarah rolled her eyes. I'm just saying that they're very careful. Maybe aluminum foil? We could wrap ourselves in it? It's always gold. So if the star catchers found the box, they'd have to know to wear gold, right? Otherwise, death to thee? Sarah studied the box some more. Okay, she said. I'll get a mirror, you get a curtain rod. What? Just get it. A minute later, the box was propped between two pillows on the bed. Aiden and Sarah were crouched on the floor. Sarah held the curtain rod, and Aiden held the mirror up so he could see the box. Using the mirror, Sarah maneuvered the curtain rod so it was touching the lid. Get ready. For what? For whatever's going to happen. I wish I had a gold suit. Her eyes on the mirror, Sarah gently pushed the rod against the side of the lid. It came up easily, pivoting on two intentionally mounted hinges. And as the box opened, Sarah and Aiden both instinctively turned away, wincing, fearful of nothing. No blinding light, no sound, nothing. And after a few seconds, Sarah and Aiden opened their eyes, rose to their feet, and cautiously peered into the box. They saw what appeared to be a second lid. It was also made of gold, but at its center was a small, exquisitely crafted, five-spoked wheel. Next to the wheel was a circular opening, about a half inch in diameter and a half inch deep, close at the bottom. Well, what do you think, said Sarah. Aiden studied the box for a moment and said, I guess if you turn the wheel, it's going to open that hole. I think so too. That way you can control how much comes out and not kill yourself. I hope, said Aiden. <clears throat> Sarah set down the box on her bed and she put her hand on the wheel, took a deep breath and exhaled. Here goes, she said. She turned the wheel counterclockwise a quarter of a turn, then waited. Nothing. Sarah looked at Aiden. He nodded. She looked down and turned the wheel another quarter of a turn. Suddenly, the hole was glowing brightly with a warm golden color, and the room was full of music. Aiden jumped. Do you hear it? Sarah nodded. Bells, she whispered. Like a million of them. Where's it coming from? Aiden waved an arm. Everywhere. Sarah hugged herself. Do you feel different, like kind of warm, but warm inside? Yeah, said Aiden, smiling broadly. I feel warm and just great. Better than good, giggling Sarah. Wonderful. She put her hand on the tiny wheel again. Sarah, said Aiden. Just a little more. She gave the wheel another quarter turn, and now the bells became a symphony playing all around them. Oh my, she said. Sarah looked at the box. I want to touch it. I don't know if that's a good idea, said Aiden, but his tone was unconvincing. He, too, wanted to touch the source. Sarah reached out her hand gently and tilted the box. She held her left hand and cupped it next to the glowing hole. She had barely moved the box when what looked like a tiny tongue of light flowed from it, wrapping Sarah's hand as it flooded the room with a brilliant whiteness. Aiden turned away, momentarily blinded. When the glare faded, he turned back, blinking, waiting for his eyes to readjust. But when they did, he froze. Sarah was gone. The glowing box was still in the bed and the door was closed, but he saw no sign of his sister. 
Sarah, he called, panicked, sweep, panic sweeping through his body. He jumped up, looking around the room frantically. Then he heard a giggle from up above. Aiden looked up to see his sister suspended in air, her back gently bumping the ceiling, a huge smile on her face. It was true. The stories were true, she said. For a moment, Aiden could only stare. You're flying, he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. She angled her head down slightly, and the movement caused her to drift across the room. Wow, she said. What does it feel like? Why don't you find out for yourself, Aiden? Aiden went over to the bed, hesitated, then gently tilted the box toward his cupped hands. Again, the light filled the room, and for a moment, Aiden could tell what was happening. He felt the top of his head brush against something and realized it was the ceiling. He looked down. The moment sent him into a very slow, 180-degree midair rotation. Whoa. Exactly, said Sarah. They spent several giddy minutes getting the feeling of flying, seeing how the angle of their bodies affected the direction and speed, occasionally bumping into walls and furniture. Then Sarah opened the window. Whoa, wait a minute, said Aiden. If I want to fly, I want to fly. She swung her legs out and sat on the windowsill looking down. Their room was on the fourth floor of the Cadogan. It looked down on a side street, which at the moment was deserted. The night air was cool and clear. Here goes, she said. Aiden pushed off the far wall and flew out the window, grabbing the sill to stop him from shooting through it. He stuck his head out and caught sight of Sarah as she swooped across the street, gaining speed, heading straight toward a parked car. Aiden was about to shout when she let out a little shriek, swooped, and missed the car by an inch. Come on, she called. Aiden swallowed hard and pulled himself through the window, willing himself to keep his eyes on his sister, not the street below. He angled his body to the left and after a few wobbles got himself aimed towards Sarah, who was now flying a hundred feet in the air. As he followed her down Sloan Street, Aiden hazarded a glance down and was horrified to see pedestrians. Isn't this fantastic, she said. Yeah, fantastic, but maybe we should go back. Why? Because we're flying over London, Sarah. Somebody might see us. Nobody's looking up here. Um, I think that guy is. Sarah looked towards Sloan Street, where an elderly man had stopped on the sidewalk and was looking directly at them, shielding his eyes against the glare of the streetlight. Uh-oh, said Sarah. Follow me. They swooped down and hovered behind a tree. Come on. She rose up and Aiden was trailing. They were high above the park. The man had seen them again and Aiden looked right into his eyes. The man was pointing and yelling. A small crowd was gathering. Aiden, his sister's voice came from below. He looked down and saw her standing on the sidewalk. He heard yelling from Sloan Street. Come on, he called to Sarah. I can't. It wore off. Figures appeared at the end of the street, and Aiden hung suspended in the air for a moment, uncertain, then swooped toward the sidewalk. He landed next to Sarah a little hard. People are coming, he panted. I see them. What do we do, run? No, we just act calm and walk toward them. They didn't get a good look at us, and they're looking for people going the other way. Sarah started walking towards Sloan Street. Aiden joined her. The first of the runners, a young man, sprinted right past them, his eyes on the sky. Three more young men ran past, also looking upward, one of them holding up his cell phone, trying to shoot video. Next came the young couple. Uh, excuse me, did you see anybody go past um, in the air? In the air, said Sarah. Yeah, in the air. <laughs> what, like flying? Yes, did you see them? Of course not, said Sarah. The couple passed and Sarah and Aiden started walking again. On the sidewalk ahead, another figure was approaching. Too late, Aiden saw who it was, the elderly man. He blocked their path and waved a finger in their face. You, you were flying. The man raised his voice to the others, now at the end of the block. Here they are, I found them. Come on, said Sarah. They heard shouts, but did not look back. 30 seconds later, they were gasping for breath and ducked into the Cadogan lobby. They strode briskly to the elevators and boarded one, and as the doors closed, they peered out anxiously, but there was nobody pursuing them. Man, said Aiden. Wasn't that great, said Sarah? Parts of it, said Aiden. He tried to rise off the elevator floor and found he couldn't. Mine wore off, too. We'll have to keep that in mind next time. So we're going to fly again? Huh. Of course we are. Don't you want to? Yeah, but... But what? I'm not sure. I mean, that star stuff is amazing and everything, but I don't know if we should be messing with it. Sarah was about to answer that when the elevator doors opened. 
They tiptoed down the hallway past their parents' room and Sarah was grateful that she had kept her key card in her jeans pocket and quietly opened the door inside. They immediately felt the warmth of the star stuff hearing the pleasant musical sounds. Sarah went to the golden box on the bed, somewhat reluctantly, turned the little wheel clockwise and the glowing hole went dark. The sound and warmth went away. Both Sarah and Aiden suddenly noticed that the room was chilly. Cold air was pouring in through the open window. Sarah walked toward the window to close it and as she reached it, she saw something just outside the window. Then she screamed. And that's the end of the chapter. So a couple hints that you need to keep in mind. Number one, we've only made it this far through the book. So obviously tracking down the star stuff in the box was just the start of the adventure. And you being knowledgeable about what star stuff can do and what its effects are, you wanna be thinking about what problems could be created from Aiden and Sarah having the box, uh, opening the box and using the box. So tomorrow's chapter, is entitled The Black Wind, and that may give you a hint as to what might happen uh, tomorrow.